Nice to uh, finally uh, e meet you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So yeah, we can just uh, get started then. Uh, your story in journalism and activism in Iran is, of course, an uh, amazing one. When did you leave Iran, and uh, how was your personal experience as an artist and poet in there? You know, I, I began to write poetry when I was very young. But uh, my first book uh, came out in 2004. But uh, the, the problem that was the cause that I had to leave my country was not about poetry, poetry size. It was about my activity in human rights against uh, death penalty and stoning in Iran. But in maybe I can tell you about the common um, base of these two sides, because uh, the main the main problem is censorship for both as a poet and as a as a journalist. I became a, an activist because I could not continue my job as a journalist. I worked on some cases, human rights cases in prison. I wanted to um, tell their story, but I couldn't, I couldn't publish it. I wrote some articles, but I couldn't publish it. And then I published it in my blog, in a feminist uh, website or a, a feminist magazine, but it was not enough because um, you could not follow the cases as a journalist, but you wanted it. Uh, and it's not just about poetry or writers, it's about all arts and literature. Um, after 1979, that we had uh, an Islamic revolution in Iran, um they made many censorship in law and um, not only that we had a lot of things that maybe there is nothing about it in in law but you know that you cannot write about it for example about body about sexuality about even about love and they can be some social issues, some social words, and uh, as well, they can, they, can, they can be some political uh, issues. You cannot, uh, you cannot write about, for example, um, Supreme Leader. You cannot, you, of course you can write, but you have to write just positive things. You cannot criticize them. You cannot criticize uh, religion. You cannot criticize even now many political people. I hope that I answered you, your question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, as you said, some of it is uh, in the law and some of it is not. So, of course, uh, you know, uh, those things that are not uh, in the law that are not legal but are still there, they can, you know, change over the time. So how do you see the evolution of the freedom of art in Iran after the revolution till today? Um, we had a lot of things, a lot of things change in, in, the, in the society. For example, you cannot um, have music like before the revolution. Pop music was forbidden. And after many years, uh, some traditional classic Iranian music came out. And that was the first time after many years we heard about uh, this kind of music. But not all, but many Iranian had uh, their music public music, pop music, or, or the other kind of music underground. They continue it in private people. They had many um, private, for example, music classes in their home. Even they could in some period in, in, in a period we could not show instruments in public, but we had the classes in, in the underground in home. 
but gradually it changed. You know, uh, for example, they said that women's voice, voice is haram. You cannot um, listen to women's uh, singers. But after some years, they, they told that they, I mean the, the state, the government, they told that women can sing, but together, not alone. But um, after, after many years, I believe that this a little changing, this kind of gradually evolution is not enough. You have right to have it without any permission, without any limitation, without any censorship. This is the fundamental right for people. Okay, uh, what kind of uh, troubles might the artists face in Iran from the state if they are caught? We can, uh, for example, read about uh, uh, Mehdi Rajabian's troubles with uh, publishing the new album, but uh, like, how widely are these things enforced? What kind of troubles do artists face? Many of them pay for uh, writing or for making art with, for example, um, prison. Mehdi Rajabian was one of them. Uh, now I can tell you about uh, Bakhtosh. Bakhtosh is uh, Optin Bakhtosh is a poet in prison now this, these days. We, we are very concerned about uh, his situation in prison because um, he was sick for COVID-19. But uh, they keep still he, him in, inside prison. Yeah, uh, you uh, told about how you got your start in activism, but could you tell me a bit more about uh, your activism today? I came in 2009 to Norway as a guest writer. Here I published uh, two poetry collections. The second one and the third one because the first one published in Iran. And I have participated in more than eight uh, anthologies. One was uh, uh, article anthology and the other uh, are uh, poetry. And uh, I continued writing about human rights in Iran, not only that, from uh, yeah, I, I but but the problem was that my activity in Iran was in related to prisoners, women prisoners, and some children under eighteen um, prisoners who were sentenced to death penalty. That was my particular particular um, activity. But here I could not have relation for them directly but I could uh, write about them because there, there, there are many, many cases. Uh, since 2016, I am in uh, the board of uh, Norwegian Pen Association to that's our main job, our main activity is struggle for freedom of expression. And during uh, being in this, important um, association. We have a lot of activities, not only in Norway, but also we work about many writer, uh, many writers in prison, in Iran, in China, in, in um, yeah, Eritrea, and, and we, we work about a lot of cases. Yeah, I think that's all from me today thank you so much <laughs> for the insights thank you for, uh, for for asking me and i hope that uh, the answers were were enough absolutely uh, absolutely yeah. <laughs>